Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. This is Jonathan Wilburn inviting you to the Charles Novell School of Music, July the 14th through the 20th at Murray State University in Murray, Kentucky. You don't want to miss this opportunity to enhance your craft and to sing the praises of Jesus Christ. You will enjoy this. So log on to cnsmusic.com and get more information about how you can get registered today. Hey everybody, Rob Novell here. We're back for another episode of the Charles Novell School of Music Podcast, The Best Day Yet. Hope this finds you having your best day yet. Man, I tell you what, we just had uh, four or five of of our best day yet. We are coming off of our CNS uh, staff retreat for 24 we met in Gatlinburg last week um, with a lot of our staff. Not everybody could be there. Uh, we had a few that had some scheduling conflicts, but I would say a good 90% of our staff, our core staff was there. We were able uh, just to spend some time relaxing, <laughs> reflecting, refocusing, just refilling and uh, just do, we did a lot of planning for CNS 24. You all, CNS 24 is going to be amazing. You just heard Jonathan Wilburn talking about it in the opener there. And we met, and you know what? We put some skin in the game to uh, truly, truly, truly get ready for um, July. July 14th through the 20th at Murray State University will be our next national session of the Charles Novell School of Music, CNS 24. And we've been announcing guests. If you follow us on social media, you see that. If you don't, please, 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 uh, friend request me, Rob Novell. Also follow, if you'll look up the Charles Novell School of Music, you can follow our public page there. And we keep announcements. We keep different things out there talking about our summer session, our national session that takes place for a week each summer in July. But we also, through the course of the year, we go out and we do different, um, what we call weekend regional sessions. So keep an eye on what we're doing on social media because we very, very, very well throughout the course of the year may be in your area and you could come out, spend some time with us. Man, I love everything about the Charles Novell School of Music. Backing up to last week, you all, I love our staff. God has sent some amazing people to surround me in carrying out the vision of the Charles Novell School of Music. These are people, I know their spiritual walk is going to edify our students. I know they're qualified to teach music, extremely gifted in their fields. Number three, these are people I can trust. So I'm looking at a room full of people. There was... Everyone that was there, I could trust. If I don't trust you, you weren't there. It's <laughs> it's it's that simple. So if you weren't there, it's because I, no, 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 no. What I mean, though, I trust this staff. I trust them to walk in a way that they are going to exemplify Christ. We talked as a team. Our number one focus is to point people to Jesus. That's what we should all be doing. If we're involved in ministry in any way, shape, or form, Our number one responsibility is to point people to Jesus. The things that we get to do, the lane that God has called us into, whether it's music or speaking or drama or painting, whatever skill set God's given you that you are giving back to him, that's secondary. The, The sources should be the source and the route is the route. So just again, just a great week spending time around people that I love. We talked about several things. We actually recorded some uh, episodes of the Best Day Yet podcast that will be coming out over the next feature here. And they're kind of neat because they're more of a panel discussion. 
we were setting, uh, we had a, a room in this lodge that we had rented for the week and it was a little chilly. So we had a fireplace going in the fire, fire, a uh, fireplace, a fire going in the fireplace is what I meant to say. You can hear the crackling and popping of the fire in the background. It was just a really, really cool setting where we're just sitting around looking at each other, just talking. And I'm like, you know what? I'm capturing this. So we took some uh, equipment, we recorded. So those will be coming out in the near future. Future, But we're going to talk today, uh, and we, we talked a little bit about this more offline than we did online, but we're going to talk about practice today and how vitally important it is. We are mid-April. I teach on a yearly basis here in the Northeast Atlanta area, and we are approaching recitals and I met with 11 students last night. Probably eight of them are ready to go. The other three, we had to talk about this word right here, practice. So we're going to dive into this today. And I'm really, really excited to talk about this topic. So here are some practice tips that I think if you incorporate these into your daily practice routine, you're, see, you're soon going to be, be seeing some benefits from approaching things this way. Number one. You want to create an atmosphere. I think it's vitally important that you, whether you prefer to concentrate in a quiet place uh, or maybe somewhere where there's a little more stimulation going on, sometimes that can motivate you. I know in teaching, there are times over the years, there have been times in different places that I taught. When I lived in Ohio, I taught um, at Mihas Music on the corner of 3rd and High Street, downtown Hamilton. If you're in Southern Ohio and you need anything musical, 3rd and High, downtown Hamilton, walk in Mihas Music, ask for Jim Mihas. Amazing human. He will take care of your musical needs there in Southern Ohio. So that's a shameless plug for Mihas Music. But I taught there for decades when I lived in Ohio and actually met Jen, my wife, right there. She was a student on my schedule. That is a talk for another day, another, we could dedicate a whole episode to the miracle that, that God did when we met there at Me House Music. But when I taught there, the ground level of the music store is the showroom. It's where the uh, sales happen. That's where the equipment and the instruments are on display for you to go in and browse and look and play and then purchase upstairs on the second floor of that building are where the private uh, lesson studios are set up. And when I taught there, uh, my private teaching room uh, was next door to a trumpet room. On the other side was another piano across directly across the hall was a guitar. Two doors down to the left were the, was the drum room There was another guitar across the hall to the right. So needless to say, there was a lot of things going on. And um, we we talked about finding a good a good quiet place, maybe if that works good for you or somewhere with, with a little more stimulation. I'm telling you, when you're teaching around all of that that stimulation right there. What I liked about that, the challenge of that was helping my students stay focused on what was in front of them. I remember some practice sessions growing up where I was in some uh, piano competitions that for, for concentration, my dad would have me, he'd say, Robbie, go to your room and get your boom box. I'm dating myself. Yes, us 80 products. We had boom boxes in our room. And he, he would ask me, he said, now bring your favorite cat cassette cassette. Y'all remember those cassette tapes? Bring your favorite cassette in your boom box and come back. So I would, I'd go and he'd have me set it on the piano directly in front of me, tell me to put my favorite tape in and hit play and turn it up as loud as I could. And then he would tell me to play my song. So what he was doing was he was teaching me how to concentrate. So whether it's a quiet place, you all, or whether it's somewhere where you can really focus in and maybe have to concentrate because you need to remove some distractions around you. I think it's vitally, vitally important that you find your place and make that consistent in your practice. For me, my studio is uh, in the basement of our home 
And as I'm walking down the stairs, there's a sign above uh, on the stairs. As you're coming down, you can see it. It says, this is my happy place. And we were out and about. I saw that sign. I'm like, I need that because this is my studio is where I work, but I also come here to unwind. It's a safe place for me. It's a place where I can get things accomplished. So I spend a lot of time in the studio working, but also a lot of time in the studio practicing. So having a consistent place where you can create an atmosphere that is conducive to your practice. Make sure you have everything you need uh, and make sure that it's close by. You know, if you're a vocalist, bring some water into your lesson. There is nothing worse than thinking you are going to, to practice and Maybe you're singing and you uh, get in the middle and you get choked up a little bit and you're like, man, if I just had a glass of water. Well, if you leave your practice space and go to the kitchen to find a glass of water, there something is going to distract you on your journey to and from the kitchen back to practice. And you may not even get back to the practice. Have everything you need in there with you. Um, songwriters, pencils, paper, sharpeners, have everything in that room. Any, any distraction that we can remove, which would be a distraction, would be having to leave that space, that place to go get something that you need. So equip your practice area with everything that you need. Number two, warm up. It's vitally important. Just like any athlete, if you go to any professional sporting event, if you get there early, you're going to see those athletes warming up. Why? Because if you just rush right into the game and start playing, you potentially could injure yourself. Now, you all, it is literally the same with music. You need to take time to warm up before you actually get into your practice routine. How can we do that? Vocal scales, vocal exercises for our vocalist, for our instrumentalist. We can run through scales. We can run through finger exercises. We can um, take different technique building things and use those as warm up. For for me, pianist, um, if you've studied any level of classical music, you've probably been introduced to Hanan, H A N A or Hanan, H A N O N, Hanan, and Hanan are technique exercises that uh, we. Uh, pianist run across and and that we end up playing and doing uh, hand and ones th- one through five have stuck with me i've played them <laughs> i played them so much as a teenager that they they were memorized and they've been stuck there ever since so i will take the first 10 minutes or so of my practice session um if if time permits for me uh, maybe we'll explain that as well i'll, I'll talk it now for me, my practice uh, may not be a consistent one one hour session every single day of the week. I teach. I'm in the studio a lot. Um, I'm, I'm I have a busy schedule. But within my teaching, there's going to be times that a student is going to cancel, and I'm going to have a 30 minute window where I can practice. I it, it it would be a shame and a waste of time for me to have a half hour break in the middle of a teaching day and sit there and play on my phone. Now, there are days I've got to conduct business. I've got emails to respond to. I may have registrations for CNS that I need to correspond with, get confirmation material out to them, um, invoicing all of the business side of what we do. I I may have to devote that time to that. But if I'm practicing, some of those days I I do have to jump right in because um, I'm trying to make the most of of that a lot of time that I have. However, even within teaching, when I reach up to the keyboard, maybe to play something or show a student an example, you know, I, the kind of by the time I get that break, I have already done some things within my plan to kind of kind of get my fingers loosened up and ready to go. So warm up, vitally important. Number three, have a goal. Playing through all, all your old music isn't the same as practicing. Start with the end in mind by having a goal for each practice session before you start playing you're going to find you're going to progress much much more quickly and effectively so what i do within that i'll start with a warm-up then i'll move in Uh, there are three areas that i constantly have available to me for practice 
I am practicing material that I am currently staging, which means that's songs that I'm, I'm currently playing when I go out and, and perform or go out uh, f- for a ministry opportunity. There are songs that I'm constantly playing. So that's number one. Number two, uh, I dig back to the past. There are songs that I've played. Maybe I haven't played in a while. I'll, I'll, I can keep those brushed up. Number three, I'm working on new material, songs that um, I may not stage for a while, maybe six months from now. Uh, I've been working on something for a couple months. The end goal for me this whole time has been CNS 24 in July to have this particular piano arrangement ready. So there are three areas that I have kind of past, present and future. And um, on a given day, if I'm struggling in one area, instead of just getting frustrated and stopping I can, there's two other, two other lanes that I can drive in. So if lane number one isn't working for me, I may switch, switch lanes. So have a goal, have, have things that you are trying to accomplish the, the end, the, an end, an end game, short-term goals, that performance you're doing this weekend, this week, you need to be working and preparing for that, but have some long-term goals in there as well. Number four, be realistic. Uh, We all grow up with our teachers telling us, don't leave it until the night before. You all, we, that's kind of where I've been and where I was last night with some students. I'm like, guys, we're three weeks out from recital. Here's the deal. If we do not pace ourselves and if we don't get some good practice in this week, we're going to be, we're going to reach a point where we start cramming to get this goal to get this in game accomplished. I, I, I start recital stuff way early in our teaching semesters because I want the students to do the best that they can do. So as a teacher, I I am trying to prepare them and teach them, uh, some time management by the fact that we start so early. They don't, I don't necessarily show that them, that to them at the beginning when I give them songs or we pick songs for the recital. But by the time we get to this stage of things, I can show them how it's been important that we've paced ourselves along the way. So, you know, realistic, if it is, if there is a particular song that you want to do, you know, is going to take some time, be realistic. But within that, you've got to be patient. I, I, I talk with my students all the time. I mean, we're living in a microwave society. Everything is instant. We can get everything right now as quick as we want it. So I have to help people in the area of being realistic. We have to be patient. I think sometimes within our practice sessions, we have to understand it's about quality, not quantity. I mean, if you get 30, 30 minutes or an hour of good practice in a one song and you get a lot accomplished on that one song, man, that's more quality than it is quantity. Don't get to the end of that hour and beat yourself up because you worked on one song. If you're making progress with that one song, man, that's quality practice. Number five, identify and overcome the problems. Don't just play a piece or passage over and over again, and definitely don't just power through a problem area and ignore it. What I, what I do with my students, and we call it isolated practice, if there's times at this stage of things, again, we're three weeks out from recitals. I have three recitals coming up over the next um, couple, you know, within the next three weeks. At this stage of things, when they're playing songs for me last night, when they made a mistake, I would stop them and I'd be like, what's going on there? Now, uh, the second time I let them play through the song one time, I asked them to play it again. And what I'm checking is any mistakes I hear the first time, the second time is going to tell me, is that a consistent area that they're struggling with? Or was that just a mistake that they made the first time? So if we find one of these areas, I, I stop them. We isolate that area and we work on it. We'll go through that three or four or five times. It, it gets better each time. You know, some, sometimes they'll, They'll say, yeah, that, that, that's that spot every single time. Well, okay, well, let's play it again. And they'll play it, and I'm like, okay, let's play it again. And we get three or four in. Sometimes they get frustrated with me. You can see it on their face. Other times you start to see them smile because they can hear how each time that they repeat it, 
and play it again, they can hear the improvement and they can hear how it's getting better. Those are those areas within your practice. You can maybe get the encouragement. You're encouraging yourself. Your ears are listening and you're hearing the improvement and it builds your confidence. It 100% builds your confidence. So identify and overcome your problems. Not every problem should be approached in the same way. If it's a rhythmic problem, maybe try practicing the rhythm alone on a table or just using one note alongside a metronome so you don't have to think about the notes as well. That's a great point. I uh, I talk with our students. There's a scripture, um, um, pray without ceasing. And I remember years ago hearing my dad, uh, the, the, the CRN, the Charles Robert Novell version, read this way. Practice without ceasing. Man, you all, we can be practicing when we are not in that safe, happy place that we talked about up front, building and preparing for yourself. You don't have to be in your practice area or even in a mindset of practice to be practicing. What do I mean by that? I used to get in trouble in high school because I would be sitting on my desk in class, tapping out rhythm patterns that I was working on certain things or things maybe I was hearing in my head. I am tapping out rhythm rhythm uh, uh, passages on the desk and multiple teachers would get at me. And obviously, because I am a good person, I would stop. But I actually, even into to now, into uh, my adult life, I catch myself. I, I drive a lot. I travel a lot. I'm constantly um, moving the fingers on the steering wheel maybe over on the armrest or on the gear shift, I see that my fingers are moving. So it's good to even um, work when you're outside of your, your practice area. You can be working on those things. Vocalist, if there are lyrics that you get confused and get twisted, and we've all been there, we've all done it, we've all composed a song or decomposed a song right on the spot, you can be going over the lyrics in your head while you're driving your car to and from work don't necessarily have to be again in that uh, safe place or, or your your happy place so it's important to identify our problems number six uh, being a musician is so much more than just playing the notes it's also important to understand your instrument its repertoire and the history or the period and why the music is written a certain way I tell my students this all the time depending on what we're playing we have to put ourselves into the music this is, I believe, where we can talk interpretation. One particular student last night, he's got he's got one of the pieces. It's ready to go. So what we're working on these next three weeks is his interpretation of the music. If you remember back to um, school, when the teacher may call Sally, Johnny, and Timmy up front to read a poem out of a book. They're all reading the same passage, but it comes across to the class three different ways. Why? Three different people are reading the poem. So we are all our own individual selves. How we, I can play a piece, my student can play the same piece. It's going to sound two different ways. Why? Because we interpret the song. Individually, we interpret the song. Uh, in, in classical music, there have been times that we have looked. Uh, I love documentaries, like behind the music type of documentaries. And I, I love just hearing the story uh, behind songs. I've, I've been to some writers' uh, nights in Nashville where you, you hear the, the singer-songwriter nights, where you hear the, the, the writer talk about what inspired them to write this song, what put them in the mindset to get there. I think you all within Christian music, I think that's vitally important because that puts us right in the scene of, of how God gave them, how he spoke to them so he could speak through them to other people. So I think if we can place ourselves in the mindset of a song, I tell people all the time at the school, when you're picking songs to sing, man, you have to pick songs that are about a message that maybe it, you may be singing your own testimony. You didn't write the song, but the lyrics, the message, the story behind that song fits your life, your story, your message to a T. 
Those are the type of songs that you can truly get behind and, de- and de- deliver and interpret because you understand the meaning of that song, the message of that song. So I think it's important for us um, to put ourselves into the music. We do that within our practice sessions. That is something you can practice. Number seven, write your own music. I encourage uh, everybody. My dad felt that uh, every student that attended CNS could be a a songwriter, uh, could and should be a songwriter, because the best songs come from personal stories, personal situations. So take some time during your practice session to experiment with writing if you don't write. Man, I got a text the other day from one of our students at CNS, and we have a songwriting competition every year with our theme. Our theme for CNS 24 is It's Time. I got a text message from this young man. He's never written a song, but God spoke to him, and he sat down, and he wrote a song to enter in this year's competition. So you never know when that inspiration is going to come. Take some time in your practice session uh, to experiment with that. Um, moving on here, we're going to wrap up here in just a second, but the next thing I want to talk about in in your practice session is record yourself. A couple, couple of things we'll touch on here and we're going to actually stop here today. Um, recording yourself gives you a chance to, uh, critique your own performance You can record it and listen back. Sometimes in the course of practice, we're concentrating so much on notes, on rhythms, on lyrics that we we're singing, we're playing, but we may not even be able to hear what we're doing. Recording ourselves and playing it back allows us to hear what other people are hearing. Another good thing to do, videotape yourself. Not only are you going to hear what other people are hearing when you're up in front of them, you're going to see what they're seeing and stage presence is as much a part of our performance as um, dotting the I's and crossing the T's on the musical side of things. That is something you can practice during your practice sessions. I think if you're a vocalist, I think having a full length type of door back of the door mirror, you can get them at Walmart for 10 bucks, have a mirror on the wall somewhere in your practice room where you can stand in front of that, you can sing, and you can see what other people are singing. You've got to have facial expressions, y'all. You've got to smile. You've got to look at the crowd. You've got to acknowledge them. So if we're watching ourselves, that can be through the mirror. That can be through um, videoing our, our sessions. And then we've got to be listening. That can be through audio recording or it can be through video. These days, y'all, it's so easy so easy. All of our phones that we're all walking around with all can video. They all could just record audio as well. So guys, I think if you take some of these tips we've talked today with your practice, we like to say it this way. You play like you practice, but you also practice like you prepare. So have everything in that practice session ahead of time. Um, Have multiple things that you can practice while you're in there. Stop, isolate, work on your problem areas record yourself. Don't be afraid to watch it back and critique yourself. I think if you start applying all these tips and tricks, you're going to see that it's going to make today be your best day yet. Y'all be blessed. Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name The Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www.cnsmusic.com. As you've listened to this episode, we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet. 